Thank you, Lord. Well, we just had a good prayer. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. And this is exactly what we need because we want to talk to you all today about something that is dear to our heart and dear to a lot of people out there who's listening to us. We're going to talk a little bit about some some church traps, church pain that we have gone through. The pain led to trauma. Specifically, we want to, when we have this panel discussion, the purpose of it is really just to draw souls back. We want to bring souls back to God. We don't have anything to share with you except the word of God. Amen. We just want to bring knowledge and understanding to you about the trauma that you experienced, what happened, which, what did you go through. So that's all we have for you is the word of God. We don't have anything but love this, uh, set, this panel session. So souls have turned away from God due to the trauma they had. And what we want to do is two goals. They want to talk about how did we get in this place of trauma? And then is there a pathway back to God that may, may or may not include that church that you went to, but technically we just want to get you back to God because that's what's important. How can we get you back to God? So you trip, you, you, you know, you never trip down the stairs, right? Or you never fell off a skateboard and then said to yourself, I want to get back on there. Sometimes you say, I want to get back on there. That pain was a little bit too much, right? Well, that's what, what, that's what causes trauma. We have so much pain that it just causes trauma in our life. And then it gets to a point where you're like, I, I just don't want to be bothered with it anymore. And then you leave the church, mm. right? And then you end up leaving God because you left the church. But the pain from church can be identified as so much, so many different types of pain. You got anxiety and fear and flashbacks, feelings of being sad or hopelessness and lost, or you just feel alone and shame. Well, this pain causes trauma and unfortunately, we often say how it's being passed down from generations. So the first step to identifying trauma is let's get to the root cause of it, right? So I have a theory. So hear me out, I have a theory. I have a theory that people in the church work outside of their roles and that's the cause of the uh, the trauma that we have. That's the reason for the church incidents that you go through. So what are those roles that I'm talking about in church, right? I have my sister, missionary. Tasha from True Church of Jesus Christ with me. Amen. I love this sister. I love this sister. All right. You know what, Tasha? I just want to talk about these roles. These roles, these roles. We have husbands, we got wives, we got pastors. We got a lot of people in church. And I want to talk about the roles. But let me give you a scripture first. Because there's a scripture that comes up often in church. We might have to decipher what the scripture is. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Yes. That comes up a lot when we talk about different things. You got obey, you got rule, you got submit. Three different things. Mm -hmm. But with all of those going on, those action words, powerful words, I want to talk about the husband's role first. Let's, let's just deal with the husband. Let's talk about the husband's role when we, when we deal with things like that. All right. So first thing I want to talk about, the husband picking the wife. Or is it the pastor picking the wife? Mm. Or is it the grip? Who's picking the wife here? Because I hear a lot of stories about pastors picking wives for people, right? And it brings me to Proverbs 18, 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Who's obtaining this faith? Who's finding this wife? Because, you know, it, it reminds me of Jacob. Jacob wanted who he wanted, right? So how does the pastor know what? He what someone else's wants. You don't know the desires of that person's heart. Remember Genesis 29, 18, and then we're going to talk about this one right here. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. But then what happened? Drop down later on in the verse. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, him, Jacob. And he went in unto her. He thought that that was Rachel. So he, someone made a decision for this man and gave him mm -hmm. someone else for a wife. And that wasn't who, what his heart wanted. So there was so much pain in that, right? Because now Leah, Leah didn't get that, that, um, that, uh, honeymoon feeling, right? Because she was the one that was, that, that he found in the veil that he didn't want her to. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Who picks a wife? Does a pastor pick a wife or a husband pick a wife? Well, Sister Mary, thank you for having me, first of all. This is a really good <laughs> panel to have. I uh, appreciate you know, just being yes. here as an opportunity Thank to speak. Mm -hmm. on, the match, on the matter, I am um, divorced, but I was married. Mm -hmm. And I was married in the church. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, I do have that experience. And the, the role of the husband is to rule over the wife. Right. We, there's no way we could get around that. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. I remember a preacher said one time anything with two hands was a monster. <laughs> right? So you can't have two hands. So your one hand is your husband. Right. So who would you say should pick a wife? Do you think the pastor's out of his role by picking a wife? Well, I think that the pastor is out of his role <laughs> for picking a wife because God knows who he has for you. Amen. Amen. And if you pray and mm -hmm. fast and seek God, yeah. he'll show you who it is. You know, he'll because there there's different stages of how it kind of goes. You pray yes. and God will show, you know, it's, right. he'll, he'll reveal he her to it. you and because exactly. he loves us that much. He's right. not gonna give us anything. He Amen. doesn't want us to just Amen. have anything. Okay. So he loves us just that much. And so when you pray to him, he so knows awesome. like, all right, let me give you the desires of your heart. I agree. So can, that's right. He's, so he's don't give me easy. Sister Jan. Don't and give it to Sister me. Shack Shack is who I really mm. want. You know. So now we're gonna have issues in our right. marriage because Sister Shack Shack is not the person that I really want. To, I really want to be. With. <laughs> I guess you know. I, I agree with you on that. And just from personal experience, because you know, I, you know how I am. I, I grew up Sunni Muslim. Mm -hmm. But I gave my life over to God when I met my husband. He introduced me to Christ. Right. So I gave my life over to God. But growing up in a Sunni Muslim, you didn't get to choose love because you didn't pick who you get to marry. Your dad picked it. Right. And I'm going to tell you just from experience, none of the sisters I know were, were happy. It took them about 10 to 20 years to finally say, all right, I can be content with this man. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine that? I can't imagine. Oh, that's hard that's to do. torture. That's a hard pill to swallow. But yes, I definitely agree with you on that one. Because we, we got to be able to say when everything fails, because we know sometimes marriage is not always um, peaches and cream. Right. So when you have those rough patches, you can lean on that love that you have. Absolutely. So man, Absolutely. you can lean on that intimacy that you all have created with each other. That's it's hard to create an intimacy yes. with a strength. And that's the reason why God said that um, he gives the desires of your heart. Right. He also said that he obtains faith. A favor. So we can bring his hat and get the favor? No. no, <laughs> no. That favor is for him. <laughs> Your favor, that favor is for the husband. Yeah. Yes. Sure. I agree. I agree. So we talked about what was it? Submit, rule, obey. All right. Ephesians 5 25. Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Or does it say, husbands love your pastor? and sacrifice yourselves for the pastor's agenda. Husbands, leave his family and join his pastor and become one flesh with the pastor. Does that sound right? I like the word of God better. I'm gonna read the word of God because that just yeah. sounds better. <laughs> Let's husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church Amen. and gave himself for it. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. One flesh. One. Not one flesh with the pastor. It's just impossible. Now we love pastors. Come on now. We ain't trying to down pastors. We're not trying to, we're just trying to lift up the husband's role in the church because what I think has happened is that the husband has taken the back seat, mm. feeling, oh, I'm not worthy to have any rule or any control over my house because I sit under a pastor. But we just want to bring you all back to the word of God. That's not what the word of God says. Now we love pastors, but husbands, you have rule. You have you, your wife is to obey you yes. and not obeying the pastor. That's just the word of God. And that's all we have. Amen. How, how do you feel about that? Did I overstep that? <laughs> that was a mouthful. It really was a mouthful. It really was. But that's really good because um, our husbands do need to know what their role is. Yes. And that's why the Bible says, I remember you bringing mm -hmm. up at one point about um, the women learning in silence and going yes. to your husband. I mean, that's just, you know, you got, you, yes. there are rules and regulations for everything. Because God is a God would, of decency. That's order. right. And so he'll be in it when you do it the right way. Amen. No one's stepping out of their role. If a husband tells his wife, I want you to wear a certain color, I want you to wear a dress, a red dress for my anniversary. The pastor can't tell their wife, no, you better not wear that red dress. It's, it's two heads on a monster. So it's a wife's role to obey her husband. It's the husband's role to have rule over this wife. And I know that that's really hard for some sisters to swallow because they don't want to humble themselves and say the man doesn't have rule over me. But guess what? If you want a good marriage, you you have to abide by the word of God. First of all, let's, marriage itself is not for anyone. Mm -hmm. Marriage is just for children of God. So if you are a true child of God, you don't have a problem lining up to this word. If the, the word of God says wives obey your husband, then that. You, right. obey you obey husband. your husband. It's not my fault. You pick. You said yes to a bad husband. Right. 
you know, you got to do good, baby. You got to do bad. <laughs> You in it now. <laughs> you in it now. You, you in it now. You got to do better. <laughs> but yes, okay. Let's move on. Here's another really important one. Now we said the Bible is not an author of confusion. The head, the man is the head, Christ. A man is to obey Christ, not the pastor. But again, I want to make mention, we only bringing everyone back to the word of God. We're not mm-hmm. trying to diminish a pastor, but we're trying to edify, edify husbands. Husbands, fathers, not just, you know, husbands, but fathers. Take your role. Take your role. Take your role. That's, that's right. Yeah. Take your role. You are the head of a household. Corinthians, and again, all we have is the word of God. First Corinthians 11, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. I'm sorry, is a pastor. The head of every man is a pastor. And the head of the woman is the pastor. The head of Christ is the pastor. We got to know who our heads are. If you don't know who the head is, how do you know who to obey? Right? The head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. This is why, that's right, this is why God said, women, obey your husband. That's right. Because your husband is obeying Christ. He's leading. So what do you think? Let's talk about that, Tasha. I know that is, that's one of the, um, <laughs> one of the bigger things, uh, and not just you and I, but other people, we talk about that. We struggle with that a lot. Yes. Because we were taught certain things. We were taught that well, we do want to respect our we pastor. We do want to respect our pastor. Respect yes. and his place. Yeah, and man, that's that right. The that he gives. That's and right. Things like that. But also, mm-hmm. you have to respect your husband. Man, you have to man, obey your husband. Saying. Because at the end of the day, you are one. Yeah. And you just read the scripture. You are one. You're not one with the sisters over there. You're not one with the deacon. You're not even one with the preacher. You're one with your wife. Right. You become one. And so, when that happens... Then that's when God is just done he's, right. It's done right. It's in it. Yeah. And I know that sometimes, you know, we want to make sure that we please our pastors. Mm-hmm. But pleasing him, I'm sure we'll be pleasing our husband, being in our rightful place, meaning respecting our husband and obeying our husband. So, you know, if, if we just get off with that. <laughs> But like we could do, we just gotta bring it back to the word of God. Bring it back to the word because of God. again, you know, the reason we, we are we're stressing these roles. It's because we want to just say if everyone stays within their roles in the church, a lot of this painful scenarios that we go through, it right. just won't happen. Right. Letting someone else pick a wife for you and then you and this other woman having to come together when you don't really have a relationship built, that causes trauma because now she's in pain because she's not being valued. She's not feeling beautiful. She's mm-hmm. not feeling wanted. or t- So she's going through this and then he's going through this because men, although a lot of men don't want to admit it. They need that attention. Yes. They need to well, be loved. Very they need agree. a woman to just come and just like give them a little spank on the butt. Yes. They need that. Lord. They need those kisses out of nowhere. They need all of those hugs. Right. They, they need, need the attention as well. They need those text messaging. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think sometimes we neglect that. So we have to do that. So let's go on to something else. I got a really good one for you. <laughs> First Timothy 3. All right. Four, one that ruleth well his own house, mm-hmm. having his children in subjection. With all right. So who rules the house? The pastor ruleth, does the pastor rule well each member house and then their children? Or I mean, does that sound right? Does the pastor rule the man and his children? So is it possible for me to rule my house and you to rule my house? Or oh, it's just the same? Mm-hmm. It's not, it's impossible, it's right? Impossible. It's impossible. And, and the Bible says that you can't stand on an unstable foundation. That's right. So in order for that foundation to be stable, the husband and the wife comes together mm-hmm. and he set the rule or they set the rule because together. Because a lot of times, and I love marriages that they work together. Right. You know, they work together. They, mm-hmm. they keep the outside outside because they that, exactly what they are outside. Mm-hmm. And they work together and they set the rule for the house. And, they, you know, even if there's an issue, they don't do it in front of the children. They step away and they work on it. They don't, well, let's call Brother Pastor. Let's call Brother Deacon. Let's Pastor, he's to rule over his own home. So I don't understand how, what man would have um, even the time to rule over your house, someone else's and someone, it's too much. Plus when, when just think about it. We as women, when we have our own home, the last thing we want is mother-in-law to come in and try to rule our house. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, I didn't used to cook it like that. <laughs> he, liked, he liked the way I do the right. cornbread. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. 
So that goes both well, I ways. Know what he likes. This is my son. Right. <laughs> You're not doing this for the kids. You're not taking care of him, right? Oh, <laughs> Look at these baby yeah. girls' hair. You can, I would never let my baby That's hair look right. like this. That's, right. That's exactly what it is. So just like two women can't rule a house, two men can't rule a house. It just wouldn't work well. It, it it's not it's not gonna work, right? So we got to do everything in decency, right? So the, let the husband rule your own home, of course. In order to have this, where it says having his children is subjection. Husbands, when you rule your home, make sure you and your wife, your wife understands the rules in place, understands why you're saying that's what you right. say. So that's the only way she can teach the children. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to have the children with that. You've got to be able for the husband and the wife to have that that that, that communication. communication. That's why it says mm -hmm. you obtain favor. That's favor. That's favor right there. When you have someone. Yes. And that's the reason why the, that bond, it, yes. it should not be broken. Mm -hmm. you know? The rose always should stay in its place because then that's where the favor comes that's in. That's what it is right there. I love that's it. That's where the favor comes in. Yes. Everybody grows spiritually and mm -hmm. everything will right. have that favor. Mm -hmm. All right. John, 1927. We're we still on the man. We're still on the man. We just want to that's empower true. these husbands, these the fathers. And, and I'm going to tell you, even if someone doesn't have a husband or a father, you got an uncle, you got a brother, you, you've got someone that can be your head, your cover. Okay? So... John 19, 27. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took unto his unto took, I'm sorry, her unto his own home. Mm. So what am I saying about this? <laughs> Jesus was the head of the house, right? Right. Joseph was gone. So he made be, Jesus before he left, he made provisions for his mother prior to his death. Mm. Says it right here. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. He didn't tell his mother to see the pastor. Mm. He didn't do that. He made the disciple he loved to now be Mary's son. Mm -hmm. So husbands are supposed to make sure their family is left with the head. The house is to depend on that head for necessity. Not a pastor. Mm -hmm. Not a pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even it's not and not just like a head, but also money. Leave something behind for your family. That's right. Oh, yeah, no, that's leave great. a will. Absolutely. Come on. <laughs> But this is just another thing to say that if, if a husband leaves by, leaves behind like um, a head of the household, uh, leaves behind, leaves some money for his house mm -hmm. if he has to die. This, this woman doesn't have to spend um, a long time in closed doors with a pastor to ask him for money. You see what I'm saying? Or she don't need to be calling him on the phone, asking him, can you come and, I don't know, fix my car. Can, I don't have money. Can you come fix the pipes in my house? Husbands are supposed to stand up and leave provisions for their wives, for their children. So again, you know, he's just still on the husband. <laughs> Come on, husband. Quite a role. Come on, husbands. <laughs> no one said this was gonna be easy. But this is your time. You gotta stand up. First Corinthians 14, 35. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in church. So let's talk about if you would learn anything. So when you have a husband, and yeah, that's just, this is why it's so important that we do a good job when we say yes. We can't just say yes to everyone who proposed to us. That's why we just can't let people just pick a man for us. Because you need a man that knows the word of God. Not just someone who, you know, can shout, that's right. speak in tongues. You be picking me a devil. Yes. And then down the line, I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, so you have to exactly be very what you said. careful with that. That's right. Exactly. So we need husbands mm -hmm. that can teach. The woman is supposed to ask her husband biblical questions. If he, if she can't depend on him for a biblical question, this is a problem. He needs to go study that word. That's right. All right, Titus so chapter. You can have that answer. Need that answer. That's right. <laughs> Titus chapter two. It says the older women shall teach the younger women. Ask the mother of the church. So if you're in the church, women who don't have, uh, we say you're in the church and you don't have a father or you don't have an uncle or uh, or anyone like that, you can find an older woman to help you. If you have a question, you can find an older woman. You don't always have to run. What I'm saying is you always have to run and uh, feed on the pastor. If the, if the man of God is busy, pastor is busy doing something, find a mother of the church. That's good. Find a mother. Who's supposed to teach these women? Who's supposed to teach us women? how to be wise, how to how to care for our children, how to be the um the help me that we're supposed to be. 
So I think there's you know there's still some room there. Let's ask some of the mothers in the church when you have right. questions. But Tasha, we're about to get to a good part. You ready right. for this? Let's, let's do it. Wife's role. Mm. Wife's role. All right. So when we speaking of the wife's role earlier, we talked about those three words: obey, rule, and submit. So what does that mean for a wife? Who is supposed to obey the husband? Like, who does the husband have rule over? Uh, who submits to a husband? These are this is when we talk about the wife's role. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a scripture at you. I want you to tell me what you think. First Peter three six. Even as Sarah obeyed Adam, called him Lord. I'm sorry, Abraham. Thank you. Calling him Lord. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, I think this scripture back in the day, it was just my Lord. My, per, my, my husband, my, mm -hmm. that's my baby, my, mm -hmm. you know, I think right. it was kind of one of those things. Yeah. It's, it's more of a respect type thing, my Lord. And I said, well, he must have been a great man for her to even come up with that word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that, that goes that favor again, yeah, you know? Favor. So, in that, because she loved her husband, mm -hmm. because if you love your husband as a wife, if you truly love your husband, you're going to want to obey him. You don't want to give him a hard time. You want to be his peace. Right. When he has to guide the house, go work, go do this, this and that. You want to be his peace. Yeah. I like how even you can pick something that's the, the, that happened in the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. like Sarah and Adam. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Sarah and Abraham. I keep on saying that. It's still the same thing yeah. today. Sarah obeyed her husband. She, she, obeyed, she obeyed her husband. And she called him Lord. I know some women be like, oh, I know about the I Lord thing. Me. But like, it's just a title, just like it, king. Right. Just, you know, king right. and lord. But Jesus is the king of king and lord of lords. Yes, he is. So we know when Sarah was calling him lord, we, we don't put a capital L no. on there because he, she's not even giving him that sense. That type of, she's yes. just saying lord. Right. That's yeah. all. But she's yes. referencing him as she, she should. That's her husband. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, if anyone can uh, show good worship, it's, it's, uh, it's when we love. Oh, I agree. We love to worship. Right. So, she, so this one, it says Sarah obeyed. Talking about the desires. So Genesis 3.16, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and, and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. Mm. How do you have, how, how is it possible that you can have two? Is it possible you can have two desires? What are you getting at with that? Let's so, talk so about then, that. right. So, when you, when it says, uh, he shall rule over you and your desire shall be to him. Mm -hmm. So, do you go directly to God or do you go to your husband? That's a good one. So, let's think about that. When we go to God, we go to God because, first of all, I would say this it's not a such person who would not go to God. Would mm -hmm. you, not, you, you want to go to God. You don't know, worship God. You're going to go to God for your husband. Mm -hmm. For covering over him continually, you're going to give thanks. You're going to give confessions to God. Go to God. Yes, you 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 love God and you desire God, but God put it in us for our desire to be for our husband. And the reason He put that in us, He don't want your desire to be for your husband. That desire is for your husband only. It's real good. <laughs> So again, desires, yes, desires for a woman is for her husband. Mm -hmm. At the same time, man, we love the Lord. We could spend all oh, yeah. we could spend hours with God. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about something else. And then we're gonna we're gonna go on real quick. But Ephesians 5 22. Wives submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Wives submit your your own self unto your or wives submit yourselves unto the first lady husband. No, no, I'm sorry. So I think again, we, we just trying to edify women. Yes. You got to obey the word of God. If you obey the word of God, then there won't be any problems. You won't run into these issues. You can't be submissive to the pastor and submissive to your husband. That would never work. You know, I think I said, uh, if you stay in your home, mm -hmm. submit to your husband. Mm -hmm. A lot of the hurt and the pain because sometimes you know we want to vent and we want to yeah. you know go tell the pastor on the on the hook because maybe the husband ain't doing you know he ain't buying me a pair of shoes that I wanted last week so I'm gonna go tell the pastor. I'm gonna get him. You know, but now you don't even understand the issue and the problem you 
create. That's why he said you only have one head. Because now you're creating an issue. And your husband, we don't want him to ever, the husband to ever feel like that he doesn't have his role or we're diminishing his role. Right. right. That's your husband. That's your husband. That's, this is your head. God gave That's him right. to you. Just as we're a gift to them, they're a gift to they're us. They're a gift to us. Amen. I love that. We are gifts to each other. Because it just reminds me when um, God put Adam to sleep. Yes. He went over to the corner. Took a rib out of Adam's womb to the corner and mm -hmm. made this little nice little woman. Mm -hmm. Gave her everything he liked. And he everything. Liked, yes. And he said, ooh, what I got for you, Adam. <laughs> because I love you so much, I don't want you to be alone. So I'm going to present this gift. To I'm telling you, it has to be a gift. Can you imagine? Adam was probably having a good sleep and he woke up. Ooh. What is that? <laughs> So yes, I would say a wife is a good gift. Good, good gift. Mm, good made gift. just for him. <laughs> God is so good. Ain't he good? <laughs> I was like, God is so good. He gave us everything he liked. Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies, we still on the wife's road. Again, we want to, we're not bringing down anyone, but we want everyone to be empowered to stay in Absolutely. your role. And if you stay in your role, this avoids pain. And the multitudes of pain causes trauma. So let's just eliminate the trauma. Yeah. Women, stay in your That's role. Because even as Sarah obeyed Adam, calling him Lord, we want you to obey your husband. First Peter 3 1. Likewise, likewise, ye wives. That's a tongue twister. Likewise, ye wives. <laughs> Be in subjection to your own husband. Mm. See, here's something I noticed. Sometimes we don't be in subjection to our own husband because we want to be in subjection, not diminishing the past, but we want to be subjective. Past. That causes a little bit of conflict. That causes a lot of conflict. You've got to be able to take a stand. You have to take a stand and say, you know what? Even some cases where the pastor say, I want all the women, you know, maybe to fast Monday through Friday. You better go to your husband and make sure he's okay. okay you got to make sure the make Bible sure. says it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you have to make sure those type of things yes, you have to make sure. Have to. And, um, and also, you know, when you're dealing with a pastor, you do, you have to make sure it's all right with your husband, right. but also you respect the man of God. In this place. Like you said it from the beginning, you know, we're not trying to take away the manage, but we want you to understand that your role is mm -hmm. to be obedient to your husband, to love your husband, to do as he say, so that we can avoid Amen. the issues, like you said, and, and that, that's so we can avoid it. But, you know, we want to make sure because sometimes it is good yes. to have a pastor that we can go to get spiritual counseling Amen. from, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, we want to make sure, yes, that we not overstep it, our husbands. Our husbands. Because right. we go to our husbands first. But ask him first. For Tell the them. spiritual counsel. And then maybe he say, well, let's go to the pastor. Together. Be and together. That, that, together. That's what I'm trying to get. To go together. Because it's just But then as a, as a wife, mm -hmm. and you have a husband, mm -hmm. and you go into the pastor, I'm not really, you know. Because mm -hmm. that don't fit right. You're sitting alone in his office. Hello. Hello. Where your husband at, woman? And then a pastor should say, not let's you get your husband. Now let's just agree that there's an agreement here. Oh, you can go the talk husband, to the pastor. One hundred percent. The husband, I think a wife should never be alone with any man without her husband. No. Without his husband. The husband needs to know about that. that. Absolutely. How do, it how doesn't matter who you are. I'm telling you, how do you pastor, trust that man to president? Your yes. husband should know. Your husband should know. All right, women, we're still on the women, still on the women. We want them to Real understand. Good. Titus 2.5, to be discreet, chaste, and keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husband. You know, <laughs> and it says, let the word of God not be blasphemed. <laughs> I love that one. always says, yes. go and look in the Bible, mm -hmm. read the scripture, you, and see how many times you can find what you're looking for. Look how many references we yeah. have. It all goes back to your husband. It all goes back. Every to last one of them. Be obedient. Mm -hmm. Peter, be obedient. Yes. Hebrew, your husband. This all goes back to your husband because he's your head. Yep. He's your head. There's no yes. way he, he'll tell you all of this and it don't mean nothing. Go, go do it to somebody else. But he wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. No. And, and, and a good pastor wouldn't want you doing something that your husband is not aware of. Like taking an offering from you on the side or asking you to go visit someone or it's anything it's, it's just it shouldn't be that way so we want to make sure that think about it. if we stay in our role mm -hmm. and we understand the pastor's role and our role and the husband's role there's no way we would be doing anything outside of our husband's uh, knowledge because that would be out of the word of god that's when pain happens because mm -hmm. you come home mm -hmm. 
Your husband's not gonna be happy. I mean, would he? So who who you rather please? Exactly. At your the end of the day, or? who would you rather please? Your husband or happy? Who who's the one that has rule over you? Mm. Who's the head? Who's the head of your life? Right. The, your husband is not pastor. Not the pastor at all. You know, sometimes they want to say, but it's not. So this is why we. This is why the pain starts. So let's let's stay in our roles. Okay, we got more. Okay, who covers a woman? We just we just about to go into that. If she doesn't have a cover. All right, Isaiah fifty four five. Now this is a real tough one, mm -hmm. but this is one that comes up a lot. Yes. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For thy maker is thine yes, husband. God. If you don't have a husband, thy maker, who made you? Who made God you? God Almighty is your husband. For thy maker <laughs> is thine husband. There you have it. You want to know who covers you? Go to God. Amen. And that's why we said in the beginning, yes. all we that's want all you we to do is go to God. Go back to God. If you understand the roles, you understand God's word, mm -hmm. you take God's word in, you won't be doing anything outside of what God's word says. You'll think about it real good. So I make it. All right. Ephesians 5.33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in a particular uh, so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her, reverence her husband. Man, that's deep right there. You meant it. He said it so many times because you know how a child you have to say, don't touch yes. the stove, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove, or you're doing a great job, you're doing a great job. That's yep. because he wants you to get it, he wants you to understand the importance of it. Yep. He, I don't believe he'll put something in the Bible over and over and over again. No, it's not important. No, this is very, this is very important. important. It's so important. important. You're right. Marriage is important. God, honorable. He wants us to make sure we keep it right. right. So this is important. Mm -hmm. Reverence your own husband. Now reverence the first lady That's husband. Right. Now, now, again, we're not taking nothing away from pastors, but I think the problem, again, is folks are going outside the road. And this is what's causing the trauma. So we want people to come to God mm -hmm. and we want us to do that. Let's have church, yes. but let's have it the right way. That's, right. that's all we said. Let's so, just have it the right way. It the it's, right. No, it's no need for all of this other drama. Everyone in the When I was growing up, you know what they used to say? You need to stay in your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay in your, stay lane. in your lane. And it was never something nice. It was no. not like, Hi, would you like to stay in your life? There's always oh, conviction with that. You need to stay in your life. Right. And that's all we're telling y'all. Stay in the role. Stay in your role. Mm -hmm. One more for women. Okay? Because we talk about <laughs> rule, obey, submit. At, oh, wives. Ephesians 5, 22, 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the, of the body. Right. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject un subject to their own oh, husband and everything, <laughs> everything. Be subject to your husband and everything. Mm -hmm. So ladies, if you think <laughs> that anyone has any word over your husband's word, you are fooled and you will be hurt because you're working outside the will of God. That's it. Everything it says. No one should, no, no. Tell me what you think about when you see the word everything. And I, you know what? I, I read the scripture before, but I never really put an emphasis on that. On word. everything. That's right. On everything. You know, God is something. He's just somebody. Yes. And it's really interesting how he has the word mm -hmm. so plain. It's, it's like light bulb God. Yeah. Like you said that everything, light bulb God, that means everything. Should I, should I, should I put a bandaid on my finger? If that's something that I need to, well, let me go to my husband. <laughs> you know, if I, you know, I think I want to change the the washing powder, husband, everything, everything. Every, I mean, even though we wouldn't do that, right? But what I'm just saying, saying, everything. In this day and time, that's why you need a real husband, yep. a real man. Of God. That's why you don't need something that Johnny J come late and pick for right. you, because you have to go to him for everything spiritual, mm -hmm. natural, yeah, physical. Everything, everything. <laughs> everything. You have to go to him for that. That's true. That is something. And then us women, we have to be sure that we stay in that role mm -hmm. of everything. Yeah. To him. To, to him. your husband. To him. <laughs> to your husband. That's yes. it. That's All right. We yeah, now we, we dealt with the husbands. Hopefully everyone know they're wrong. Yeah. We dealt with we the wives. It. Husbands back. Got this. Stand up, husbands. That's all we saying. Wives. 
we dealt with you. Now, we have to go on to another person. Mm. Pastors. Like we said, we love our pastors, but I want to really talk about what is the pastor's role in the church? What, what, is it, what are they really meant to do? First Peter 5, 5, 1 through 3. The elders which are among you, I who, are, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the mm -hmm. flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, mm -hmm. but willingly. Oh, my God. Not for filthy. <laughs> You're the willing to. <laughs> Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. I like that willingly. I like that. But because sometimes it seems like what we do, what you know, what some people like to do. No, so I'm just talking about like just anyone mm -hmm. okay they like to beat people over the head exactly. you know trying to try what they say rebuke them mm -hmm. in the open because they didn't do what they wanted them to do i wouldn't call it rebuking when they do that i probably kind of cuss them. but you know cussing without saying the cuss word. okay <laughs> but feed the flock that's all you're supposed to do. feed the flock what do you think about that? uh I, I really love this scripture because then i love the fact that it doesn't take away from mm -hmm. your option because if Christ gave us an option to either serve him mm -hmm. or not serve him and that's why he said willingly he mm -hmm. wanna, because if I love you mm -hmm. I don't want you to love me because I give you a dollar to I want you to love me because you want to love me right. not because I'm beating you upside the head okay, not because I'm bad bored or not because mm -hmm. I'm putting your, you scared that I'm going to put your business right. out on the street right mm -hmm. But I want you to do it so willingly yeah. until you're gonna be open. You're gonna do, you're gonna stay on your own. And you know what? We talked about this before, right? Mm -hmm. The willingness. Mm -hmm. It's a different relationship with God yes. when you willingly oh. want to come before Him. Oh. When you willingly yes. want to, like, um, kill your flesh. Yes. And you say, you know what? I'm going to fast. I fast until my. Not because I was told. Exactly. You know, it's really interesting. Um, everybody knows that knows me that, you know, I switched um, churches and different mm -hmm. things like that. And um, I thank God for my church and my, my pastor and everything because he helped heal me. He really do. And yes. that's one. That's why I keep saying this. You know, like, we're not diminishing, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> what they do because the pastors, sometimes right. they pull their sleeves they and they get in the dirt in the morning and they help pull you out. With love. With yeah. love. And, but he doesn't get out of his place. That's right. Right? So, like, he stays in his lane, like you mm -hmm. say. And then also, um, with the willingly part, he puts God before us so much mm -hmm. until... We can't see the man. Does that make sense? That makes sense. We can't see the man. Because when we, when I decide that, oh, I'm going to, you know, my flesh should get off. Because I'm feeling so my flesh should get off. Mm -hmm. And it's up to me to bring it back. So when my flesh get off, I think about, oh, I don't want to hurt you, God. Right. Like, God, I don't want to hurt you. You know, I don't want to bring a reproach. You know, I think about God more so than, oh, God, I don't want to get rebuked. Because oh, no, if I get rebuked, oh, you know, he's going to tell my business. I'm embarrassed. I'm going to do it. Right. But guess what? I want to do it up here. Right. You tell me to sit down, but I'm standing up still up here. Mm. Like, I'm still doing it up here. Like, I still got that want to. Yeah. But it's different when you willingly want so to serve me. It's really different. Because then on the inside, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. On the inside of you, yeah. having the Holy Ghost, yes. it, it just it makes it stronger, mm -hmm. and, it, and it really just oh God, it, it's just really a different feeling. Like okay. you know, to be able to go straight way to God, mm -hmm. go straight way to God. No, yes. no, I'm not side blocking. There's nothing straight way to God, and I love the fact that that's what He does. He just pushes us toward. Don't see me because mm -hmm. I'm flesh, right? Uh oh, I'm flesh, right? All right, mm -hmm. see God. Because if I ever get off, you still got to see God. You that's still good. got to see God. Yes. And that's the beauty of that willingly. That's right. When it's done right. When it's done right. It's done right. It's done right. You know, how Deliverance it comes yeah. and you, you appreciate it that much more. You love them. Oh, you love them that much more. You, appreciate, you just trust them that much more. It's just so much easier to just give more and more to him. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing it because you want, want to. It's like not more want and need yes. to. You wake up, you're like, I gotta please mm -hmm. the Lord today. 
I gotta please them every day. Oh. If I feel like I didn't please them today, that's right. It's like I, 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 now I gotta go to you and apologize, God. Because yeah. minute, you yes. walked with me all this time, and I did not one time say good morning. Look at that. You've been with me all day long, and I didn't even talk to you. Oh. What, Jesus? Oh, but then that's when you you become conscious of God and not yeah. me. That's right. That's right. I wake up in the morning. I want to give God my first word. See, I don't give it to my husband. I give it to him. <laughs> and guess what? You pleasing God by doing it. Pleasing God by you doing it. Yes. But I can't go. I cannot go through the first hour of me waking up and I didn't give God something. Normally, when you stand up in the bed, I made this my thing. I stand up on my bed, always stretched. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I made it a conscious effort to do that because mm -hmm. when you start the morning with a phrase on your mouth. It never leaves. It never leaves. So even throughout the day, mm -hmm. you just be like, Lord, I even though I hate God, it, you, you still good. You still a good God on a bad day. That's right. And so it just helps you. It helps you more. We're going we gonna to move on, but we got stuff on that wheel. Oh, my it's God. It's just something else. Y'all don't understand. It, it's, it's just When you different. understand how to submit your flesh, wow. you can go on and on and talk yes. about that wheel. Yes. Jeremiah 3, 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, the mm -hmm. Lord's heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's what the word of God is. We want pastors to feed us. Yes. Feed us with knowledge and understanding, understanding. So that we know we, we have some word, we have something in us to go on throughout the rest of the day. That's what we're looking for. We don't need we don't need you to take us in another room. Okay? We just just stand in the pulpit. Feed us. That's what we want. Feed us. <laughs> Amen. All right, so we got another one. All right. Well, I, God mm -hmm. is so good that yeah. He gives us protection. We just covered all the way around. Isn't it nice? Mm -hmm. We cover by the past because He gives us the Word of God. Yes. And he teaches us knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. And those of us that have husbands, He gives us the covering, our head. Mm -hmm. and, and, and He just really, He loves us that much to it. give everybody theirs. It's the way they belong in our lives. He loves us. Because there's a reason why we. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why we have our pastors. That's right. You know, there's a purpose. Really there's, there's a purpose. purpose for them. It's not like the Bible doesn't say anything about a pastor. Yeah. There is a purpose. Is a purpose. But the thing is, I think we need to understand their purpose. That's right. So that we stay within yes. the world. The world. The, I'm sorry. The will of God. Will of God. When we That's go all. outside of the road, we are outside of His will. And at that time, anything can happen. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's why there's so many things that happens in the church. Because yes. people get common, flesh gets common, yes. you know, uh, manipulation happens. Yeah. So you do have to know yeah. what, what your role is and mm -hmm. how to stay in your life. All right, we're going to bring up a scripture. Man. A lot of people like to debate. I want to get your feet on it. What does this mean? We go 2 Timothy 4 2. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, mm -hmm. reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I, I, I want to talk about this because I've heard people say, and I've experienced it here and there, that rebuke part and that reprove part, right? I think that we sometimes use the pulpit as a reason to say rebuke is, but isn't really rebuke. Is. So I, that's why I say I want to get your, 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 your take on it. Woo. Reprove, <laughs> reprove, exhort. What does all of that mean? What does reprove mean to you? What does reprove Rebuke means to you. That's interesting. I get a little sweaty when we talk about rebukes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that you know, pain. That's, <laughs> that's that trauma we go through. <laughs> you know, growing up in the church, yeah. uh, growing up apostolic, uh -huh. you're going to call yourself apostolic, you know, that was um, something at the forefront. You know, you give it. I, 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 I'm kind of too far with that. I feel okay. like, you know, you should put your business out there. But yeah, tap me up because I need it. So, we are children of God and and I believe that God gives it to the pastors a lot of times when they're doing it right and staying in their role mm -hmm. to say, you need to tell that sister, you need to tell that brother. Because had that preacher never told me mm -hmm. what I was, what I was doing wrong, reproving me of that, I would have never got it right. So I do believe in rebuke. I, I mm -hmm. do. Yes. But don't cuss me out now. That's all we're saying. You know, you know what I mean? We, <laughs> yeah. we, let's do it. I can't tell you how to do it because it's got to come from God. But then don't take advantage of the situation. Exactly. You know, because then that's when the scars come. Yes. And the wounds now, I'm offended. Mm -hmm. And I can't really receive you anyway. You, you, you're trying to give me the word, but now I can't receive you because mm -hmm. I'm hurt. Exactly. So what you going to do about that? 
Pastor, what you gonna do about that? You know, I'm hurt now. Now I didn't take it as a rebuke. I took it as you coming at me. <laughs> right? <laughs> so what do you do about that? So then that's why the man of God must be wise and must listen to God when he says to how to do it and not just yeah. decide that you're angry with me and you just go put my business out there. Mm-hmm. You know, that type of thing. But then I do agree with her because we need to be flesh. Mm-hmm. Sometimes flesh needs to tap in and touch yeah. it up. And I mean, because you know, the other day I had to get Nathan. It was just a poop and I walked away. <laughs> then one day it was, I'm trying to tell you, don't do that no more. Right, right. So that was that reproof. But then I had to rebuke him. Yeah. You get, so we need that in we our need it. lives. I agree. We need it. But you're right. You went to say it's the way it's, it's being done. Yeah. It's the way it's being done. We can't take rebuke our power and use it for our own uh, agenda. So let's go back to the situation with the wife who has a red dress on because her husband asked her to wear a red dress. Pastor don't like the red dress. Or the pastor don't like the dress. So what, what is he going to do? Use the pulpit to be able to say, and you got that stupid dress on? No. Is that rebuking or is that custom? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the way we do it. We want to rebuke, you rebuke someone, you can still love them at the same time. My children, at the end, even if they get in trouble, you know what mm-hmm. I make them do? Give me a hug. That's right. And when they give me a hug, they don't just like, mm-hmm. they just get, they lay their sword on me and they give me a hug. Right. Because they still love me. Because right. it's the love that I, I know do. you're doing it. Yes. Love. When you have God inside of you and you rebuke someone, that person doesn't leave feeling shame or feeling sad or feeling alone or feeling embarrassed or anything like that. And, uh, and another thing I just have a problem with, who are you rebuking? And for what? Are you are you keeping these same, these same standards that you're rebuking someone about? We got to think about that, too. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a little touchy subject. It's really, it's, it's it is. Touchy. It is. I'm going to tell you. And I've talked to a lot of people about it, and everyone has their own understanding of it. And, I, you know, and I think sometimes people use that as a cop out, like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want him, you know, doing this or saying that, da, 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 da. but then now... You, you're minimizing the preacher on what God actually told him. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? But, not, you know what have, well, yeah. I, but I'm not talking about the whole call of bees and all, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole different thing. But I'm talking mm-hmm. about when he's actually, God is actually telling him, need to tell this because they're rapidly, they're commanded by God. Like they yeah. have a whole spiritual thing going on while they're preaching or speaking that God is in tune with them and they can just. Right. Amen. And here comes God with his word. Now, you and if God's word offend me, just read this sometime. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie to you. Like, oh, Lord, you said, Ooh, I got to drink your blood and eat your flesh. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> I can walk away like that, but it's hard. But that's why I said in the same token, they still, it's all in its place. Yep, all in its place. Like, do it to bring me to God. Don't mm-hmm. do it to run me. Does that make sense? That's what we said. Yeah, so that makes sense. All right. We got it. We, we will have a little bit more. Um, I believe your pastor, right? He said he's going to do a message. Oh. On pastor's role. Amen. 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 <laughs> but I love my pastor. Yes. I love him. I came to him so broken. Oh, God. I came to him so broken, mm-hmm. single, um, just broken. Yeah. And when I tell you he didn't pull me to the meet me in my office mm-hmm. and you know he didn't and he didn't do a whole lot, you do this, you do that, do that. Right. He preached that word, he put God before me, he let me know how God saw me. Exactly. Amen. So we all know that, you know, when I was at um your church on Sunday and your pastor, he what did he talk about? He said, When a wife wants to take counsel, mm. what does he say you gonna do? You can't keep him counsel, but you don't want to get your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring your husband on, here too. Do this is not gonna do this. <laughs> You're not stepping outside my road. You're not gonna get me in trouble with God. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. Mm-hmm. Take it. Go get your husband. All right. We're still in the pastors. Mm-hmm. All right. Acts twenty twenty eight. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church, which He hath purchased with His own his blood. Own blood. I'm not now. You know, we like to say that's my money. And I don't play about my money, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I think God does that when He purchased something with His own blood. I think He takes that personal conviction, like this is I purchased this with my own blood. Mess with this if you want mm-hmm. to. I think that it is a serious offense to yes. God when a pastor messes with someone in the church. You didn't feed 
like you were supposed to be. And he but forgot to put the, I he had purchased with his own blood. God meant that. How he meant that he purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. So again, just like you said, the Bible likes to repeat itself. What is the pastor's role? Be. Be the children of God. All right. Still on the pastor's role. And you know, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I was thinking about, you yeah. know, how uh some pastors, my church, my people, my this. We belong, we were God's children, we his people. We, we're going to this church, this assembly, mm -hmm. but we, we actually belong to him. Right. You know, and, and so I, just interesting in how you said that, how God said, no, I purchased this with my blood. With mine. Wow. I got the receipt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the blood. <laughs> you, these are your kids, wear your receipt. Oh, okay. You didn't purchase them. Okay. We do that. <laughs> Right. Come back again. Hello. <laughs> Salvation ain't in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. Oh, man, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, All right. So good. we talked about pastors, but then we also want to talk about, you know, pastors that say they pastors, but they're not pastors. Mm -hmm. How do we know? Deuteronomy 18, 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing followeth not, will it come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord have not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shall not be afraid of. Mm. There's a lot of prophet lies over here. Yes. Say things and, and it doesn't come to pass. Or let's say they tell you to do something. You did everything they told you to do from A to Z. And what was the outcome? I don't know. This, this is, I have to, we got to really deal with this when you think and about those situations. Repentance. So, you know, they could not be of God and they could say, oh, I see in your future, God getting ready to do this and this. And then it happens, but if God knew it was going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, are you, I'm going to get paid next week. I already know that. Pretty sure. That's hey, what's going to happen, right? right? We don't play with our money. We don't, right. And so, <laughs> but then how you know this? That's why he says mm -hmm. you have to try the spirit by the spirit. You have one thing I love about my pastor. He always says, "You go and read it and study it for yourself." Yep, that's true. That's what you have to do. Because when we come together, we got to learn, line up together, right? And that's what we, we want have to, to do. know. That you have to know. Um, you have to know. You have to know mm -hmm. the word for yourself to know if that is a real man, God, that man of God. Because I, I've heard somebody say that's the best business out here. Ooh, is being it's being a money. Yeah, that's what I heard. Somebody said it. <laughs> this man in New York, he, I don't know who he is, and I don't know, I can't even say his name if I wanted to, because I don't know, but I just yeah. heard the story, how, you know, he rolling up in Gucci, mm. and all of this and that, and probably got fair words. <laughs> fair words, but who knows? Some people saying he's not this and that, so you just, you have to have a discerning spirit. So we're you trying to bring him back to the word of God. And the word of God. We're not bringing down anyone. We're no. just trying to elevate people to their roles mm -hmm. and stay in mm -hmm. your role, stay in, it. stay in your lane, and you will avoid so much heartache, so much pain, so much problems. You're right about that. I'm going to go to the next person we want to talk about. Who do you think we want to talk about now? Mm. Oh, you just said it. Jesus, God's role. Let's talk about, Let's talk about it. Come on. All right. Who's in charge of yourself? First Peter 2 25. Mm -hmm. Here we go. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your soul. He's two. He's two in that. He's a shepherd and he's a bishop, bishop of your soul. <laughs> he's a shepherd and a bishop. Come on. <laughs> so who Amen. he was you were purchased with his own blood. His own blood. And we talk about mm -hmm. the charge of your soul. Tell me what you think about that. Wow, that's really powerful. I, it's, it just <laughs> amazes me when we can read the scripture and then it's just, every time you read it, you just get a wow every oh, wow. single time. Mm -hmm. He's he's the lover of our soul. He's our husband, man. He's our, he's the head of our life. Yeah. This is really, wow. That is really He takes the charge of your soul. He takes yeah, the he charge, the charge of your soul. soul. The shepherd and the bishop. So you don't have charge of No. Mm -hmm. I didn't purchase it. No. My blood. Yeah, I got no receipts. No good. Mm -hmm. My goodness. You can show me the receipts. <laughs> and he meant that. He meant that. Mm. All right. That's why he said you can't change his word. You can't add to it and you cannot take it away. 
You don't want any better now. Blood, sweat, and tears. You can't do, you can't take away, you can't add to it. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with this block in our planet. James 5, 16. Here's another one. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one to another that ye may be healed. The actual fervent prayer of righteous man is really much. Is one to another meaning pastor? Is that what that means? One to another? Does that mean pastor? Or does that mean one to another? It's a good one. We got to read. I don't know. <laughs> um, I was always told that we communicate as brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I don't think the pastor should be excluded because we do confess to our faults. Then. I mean, we need that but I think a fault mm -hmm. is different than a sin. Like something big, right? I think that that's not something you should drop on your brother. Does that oh, make sense? Oh, okay. So when you do, I, I think when it says confess your fault, so could this mean when you do something wrong mm -hmm. to one another, you come and confess your faults to them? Or does this mean when you do something in general, you have sinned? Mm -hmm. Are you saying that this means you should go confess your thoughts? What do you think? Yeah. I guess I don't think, I mean, you should drop a big ball on your brother or sister because they have to protect mm -hmm. their spirits and you want to protect their spirit. Right. And so me saying, you know what, sister? I yeah. sure got mad the other day. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, please, you know what? Forgive me because I'm telling you now. I wanted to blow my horn at that man for driving past me, trying mm -hmm. to jump in front of me. Okay, that's different than you saying, oh, I went out and this, that, and the third, like, yeah, you're gonna drop that <laughs> on your sister or your brother. <laughs> you know, but you gotta be wise in that. You gotta That's be wise in that. That's true. Now, I, I did talk about like when you do something wrong to someone else. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture I didn't put up there, so I apologize. But Matthew 5 24. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, then come and offer thy gift. Mm -hmm. So, we always say um, when you do something wrong, go, you know, you want to quickly go to the pastors. And I know our um, Catholic right. people, they love to go and confess the, you know, the priest, whoever the it is. Bible. I've never been in there. I've yeah. seen it only in movies. Mm -hmm. Does it really look like that in real life? I, I can use it. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. We, we look, we <laughs> but when you do something wrong to your brother, you, just think of it like this. Back in the days when it says that someone made a sacrifice, they brought something to the altar, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to bring a sacrifice to God. God don't even want my sacrifice because I need to go reconcile That's right. with my brother. With brother. So think of it like this. If I do something wrong mm -hmm. to my brother, how can I go to my I need to go no, reconcile go this to it, my brother. That's right. And it's so serious. He said, mm -hmm. leave your gift at the altar. The same mm -hmm. scripture you was reading in yeah. the same passage. It yep. said, leave your gift at the altar. Yep. And the gift is a sacrifice. That's, That's what it is. So he don't even want your sacrifice. He don't want anything from you because you have fault That's right. with your brother. That's right. So if you haven't fault with your brother, the word of God says, go reconcile That's with your exactly. brother. That's so right. how do we go only, this is, and this is a big thing to me because a lot of people have different understandings, mm -hmm. but how do we go to the pastor when we didn't go to our brother? We told to go to our brother, then come to the altar, and then we can make our gift unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. So where does the pastor come in when it comes to confession. Mm -hmm. Is it because we need the pastor by our side to confess to our brother? Is that what it is? But I just see that if you don't make your make your reconciliation with your brother, I don't think that, I mean, does God really accept your, your um, sacrifice after that? You never did make the uh, reconciliation with your brother. Mm -hmm. So where does the pastor come in? So do we use the pastor in this situation to say, I have made wrongs with my brother and I need you to help me talk to my brother. But if you never go to your brother, did you really do what the word of God said? If you never go to him, no. Because he definitely said, mm -hmm. we are, go to him and him alone. Mm -hmm. That same passage that you read, mm -hmm. go to him and him alone. You got right. an issue with that that person? Right. You go, because see, it's not getting it off your record you want it to the pastor. Right. You have to go get it directly right from your brother and your sister. Before you can Before even, you can even go back now, to that's God. that. Mm -hmm. That's that. So we have to go there. So then how do we then say, if I have fault, then I'm just going to only, I'm just going to talk to my pastor and I'll be all right. Is that really the word of God? Is that really how it's supposed to go? Or do the pastor say, okay, you need to go and make reconciliation with your brother. That's the way it should go. That's what I'm assuming. And you tell me what you think. 
that's good. That's good if the pastor, if you go to that pastor and that pastor sing you that way and the pastor say, okay, well, you know, don't worry about it, leave it alone, then that's something different. You know, you you need to go and do what the Bible says regardless. You gotta, yeah. you gotta go get it right. You gotta go get it so right. So hopefully when you go to your pastor first, you're saying you're giving advice and counsel okay. on how to go about the matter. And then, you know, you go and make sure it's right. At the end of the day, regardless, you make sure that you get it. But at the same time, a married woman, mm. you got no business Ooh. going to a pastor <laughs> without going to your husband. So this is why I say, I how does these, how do the roles go? Because God said, you put your altar here at the gift, you go reconcile, then bring your butt back here. So again, if we're going to tell people to go to the pastor, we got to make sure people stay in that role. And then this is where pastors come and they make sure people stay in their role. That's all I'm saying. We just, even pastors, like I know your pastor and my husband, they will, they will say the same thing. Someone come to me and confess, I'm going to tell them bring that person to us and we talk about it together but you have to reconcile this right. problem because Otherwise, in that same passage mm -hmm. what you just said he said go to them and do them alone if they don't want to hear you mm -hmm. bring them to the church there you go exactly because you should be able to go directly to god whenever you want to because how are you going to go to god when you have unreconciled business with your mm -hmm. brother we need that connection need that. to go directly Absolutely. to god all right talking about god's role First Timothy 2 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man. Mm. There is one God and one mediator between God and man. So that means that at any time I should be able to what, come before God. And when we talk about mediator, because we we're talking about confessions, mm -hmm. we should be able to rely on God, right? Yeah. What do you think about that? What do you think? I agree, we should. He's there for us. We should be able to go to our Father. Why not? Why not? Amen. And then even, I think even still when you do, with the pastor does get involved with something, even the pastor should be like, let's go. To God. Let's go to God. Yes. <laughs> let's go to God in prayer. Absolutely. You know, there was something that I came to my pastor about. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, let me talk to God about that. Yeah. You know, I appreciate that, right? I ain't got the answer yet. So obviously God haven't told him, but I thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank God for it because I don't want to get out yeah. of my place as a right. saved, sanctified sister. Amen. You right. got to make sure, you know, I want to stay in my place. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, so that that's, that's real good what you said. Mm -hmm. You know, the pastor got to even go to God. Yeah. I thank God a, a lot of times he don't move without mm -hmm. consulting God. He don't just end the whim on his feelings say, okay, well, let's do this and this. No. I get it. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. We want to still stay on um, God's role because it's just important to understand what God's role is. That's what right. he wants. Isaiah 58, 11, and the Lord shall guide thee sometime on Sunday, Sabbath day. No, continually. Sing. And satisfy thy soul in drought. I love that. And make that thy bones. Mm. Oh, that thou shalt be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. You ever seen a well dry up? Mm -hmm. It looks sad. Yes. Dry. All dry. Real up. dry. Yeah. Just look yeah. hot. Yeah. <laughs> I am not thinking about it. It's like it looks hot. But God said, you don't have to dry up. Because mm -hmm. the Lord shall guide you. I love that. So that's what that's what the Lord is. Let's follow the Lord. Follow yeah. his word. People, we just bring you back to the word of God. There's peace, love. Yeah. Happiness. <laughs> John 16 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He's not just gonna guide you into a little bit. God is gonna guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear. Come on. Amen. Amen. We're still on the we're still on the will of God, John. Yeah, the word is talking. It is. We're almost done. Matthew 6 24. I can't even read my own type of stuff. I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one despise the other yet can I serve God and man now we talk about that so we, you brought that up many times I wasn't going to say anything that I had the scriptures <laughs> later I was just like ah oh, she's on point but yes we talked about that so many times this is why women and husbands it's really important 
can't you cannot say the, the, the pastor rules you and your husband rules you. You can't say, well, my husband rules me at home, but then the pastor rules me in the church. That is against the will of God. And that is a shame to think that way. And it's a shame for anyone to teach someone that way because that's not the word of God. No man can have and serve two heads. No one can serve two heads. My, my husband tell me, baby, I need dinner at nine o'clock because I have to be at work at five. But the pastor say, I need you to go traveling with me. <laughs> you ain't gonna be able to, you better tell your husband to get McDonald's. <laughs> Everybody said it. Everybody. Everybody said it. Oh, okay. So this is why it's important. Why? Take back the power yes. you gave the uh, pastor. You got to give it to your husband. That is the one that rules over you. That is the one who, who you're supposed to obey and submit to. Let's give it back to him because you can't serve two masters. Even think of it like this. Even if there was a, a single woman and she gave all subjection and rule and submission to her pastor. When she gets married, is she gonna turn that off and give it to her husband? Is she? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and it's but in, in, that's a good, that's a really good example. Because <laughs> you know, I that's a really good example, sister. But I also think <laughs> that's a really good example. <laughs> but I also think it's just like when you leave your father's out, I don't think that you uh Oh, how can I put a little give it to me, Holy Ghost? Yeah. It's just like when you leave your father's house, it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not that he's not still your father. It's not mm -hmm. that he's still not gonna respect your father. It's just, mm -hmm. okay, daddy, well, you know, I got a husband now, mm -hmm. you know, so so thank you for everything you're talking, but I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> right. I can't come over on Sunday and do this and that because on Sunday he want me to do this and that. So it just kind of like. No, no, let me tell you. <laughs> I met a lot of fathers. I mean, that's a good one, but I, I, I met a lot of fathers. Including my husband when my oldest daughter got married, mm -hmm. she just recently got married, right? right? And one of the things he said is to to the husband, "This is now your responsibility." Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that means I agree with that, that. means she if she, if she has a will, yes, you better make a way. Yes, right. If she needs some money, you better go find it. That's her. right. If she needs a roof over it, you better go build it. Absolutely. But this is your responsibility yes. because my husband provides for everything mm -hmm. for the kids. So if some man is going to come and take one of the girls, you have to step right into that that space and you got to sure step you into it. Over. So yes. I'm saying that to say that when a husband finds a wife, you're not going to take someone who came from a, a, a family, right? I'm not talking about a broken family. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you mm -hmm. find a if you find a wife who is not in a broken family, and then you bring her over to you when you've been raised in a broken family, that's going to be a problem. So you not go. You have to give her where she's at or you go above where she's at that's the only way that this girl is going to be able to kind of take away from the dad but if she goes over to her husband and her husband is not he, you know he didn't grow up in the family where the, the, everyone set at the table to eat right that's a problem for her because she's used to having used that to have bonding that. moment right. so if the husband understands and this is why it's so important that you allow people to get to know each other before mm -hmm. marriage. This is why uh, this is why those That's arranged good. marriages don't always work. That's good because they need to learn. They need to learn. I grew up with a mother and a father. My mother and father had six children. There was never a quiet moment in right. my house. <laughs> so when I met my husband, he loves he loves his music. Right, the Jamaicans love to yes. hear reggae. Oh my goodness! And they don't just want to turn it down. They blast it to you. You you you. The walls are shaking. <laughs> it's noisy in the house. And I said to him, my whole life, I just wanted some quiet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I thought you did too. You grew up with all these kids in the house. And he said, no, I like it loud. <laughs> but these are things but that... But was used to it. So I got, I got right used to it. Right, right. right on in there. Exactly. Right. But he grew up with the mother and the father. So uh -huh. he understood, we understood certain things. Yes. Certain things we had things in common. The only thing we didn't have in common is the uh, background because my family was Sunni Muslim. Right. But I understood growing up, I know when I have a husband, I have to, he he, he rules over the head. Yes. Now, I think that in order for it to be successful for the, the uh, wife to plead to her husband, right. the husband got to understand, this is where your wife came from. So you either meet her where she is or you go above it. And she won't be looking back at her daddy for That's help. That's real good. She will That's not be looking good. back at her daddy for help. All right. We'll get a lot of comments off of that. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want to empower women. We almost yes. done. We want to empower women again. All right, she's in charge of the administration of the house. She's mm -hmm. self-efficient, reliant, 
and um, she, she basically she does. You know, Proverbs, we always talk about a Proverbs woman. One thing I like about a Proverbs woman, she's not afraid of the snow for her household, all right, for all her household clothes with garlic. But here, this is the one I really like. She considered, a, she considered the field and she bought it. Why did she buy it? I bet you she got that inheritance from her dad. I did. <laughs> Fathers, step it up. Step it up. Step it up. All right, y'all. We appreciate you all for coming. Yes. Again, women, we just want you to take the power from the task and give it back to your husband because yes. that's where it belongs. We Again, we don't want anyone to feel like we're diminishing the church or the pastor or anyone. We just want everyone to stay in your role. If you stay in your role, then you won't have these problems that you have in church. And again, real quick, how to deal with a person that has been hurt from church. We want you to really think about it. If you listen to their situations, listen to if someone stayed out of the word of God, meet them with scripture. Don't beat them over the head. It's not their fault. Mm -hmm. You know, they're suffering just like everyone else in this world is suffering. So Tasha, I thank you again. Thank you. Missionary Tasha, me. thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next. You guys yes. will hear more from us. <laughs>